Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, even though I am a finasteride peasant, I know a lot of people on my channel are proud members of the Deutasteride Master Race, or at least considering becoming members of the Master Race. I've made a number of videos on Deutasteride, and I'll link them below, but even so, people still have a lot of questions about Deutasteride. For example, people often ask me how quickly Deutasteride works, or how long it takes for Deutasteride to get out of the body if you stop it, or how to go about switching over from finasteride to dutasteride. These are all completely valid questions, Chomes, and I think the reason people are still unsure about how quickly dutasteride works exactly is because of its very unusual pharmacokinetics. Pharmacokinetics just means how a drug is metabolized in the body, and dutasteride is metabolized really weirdly. By contrast, finasteride has really normal pharmacokinetics. If you look at the half-life of each drug, they are completely different from each other. A half-life has to do with how quickly a drug is metabolized and eliminated from the body. Most drugs have a half-life that lasts just a few hours, and finasteride is like most drugs because it has a very short half-life of approximately six hours. Dutasteride, on the other hand, is a completely different story. It has an enormously long half-life of five weeks, which is really unusual for any drug. The half-life of a drug also has to do with how quickly a drug works, so many people assume that dutasteride will take much longer to work than a drug like finasteride that has a much shorter half-life. So, I have seen people actually choose to be finasteride peasants instead of joining the dutasteride master race because they're afraid dutasteride will simply take too long to work. Now, I can understand why people have that idea, and it's because it's usually true that the longer the half-life, the longer it takes for a drug to reach a full effect. In fact, there is an important rule of thumb that it takes about five half-lives for a drug to reach what's called a steady state. After you start taking a drug regularly, like every day for example, it takes a while for the drug to build up in the blood. Steady state happens when the concentration of a drug in the blood becomes stable. That means the amount of drug getting absorbed into the blood exactly equals the amount of drug being metabolized and removed from the blood, so it's kind of like an equilibrium. So for a drug like finasteride, the minimum amount of time it takes to reach a stable blood level is five half-lives. So let's assume finasteride has a half-life of six hours. So five half-lives would be 30 hours if you took finasteride every six hours. However, we actually take finasteride once per day, so in practice it takes five doses, meaning just five days for finasteride levels to stabilize in the blood, but that's still a relatively short period of time. However, with dutasteride, on the other hand, the half-life is five weeks. So does that mean it takes 25 weeks, which is about six months, for dutasteride to get a stable blood level? Well, actually, yes, it does mean that. It can literally take six months for the level of dutasteride in the blood to peak and to stabilize. But if that's true, does that mean it actually takes six months for dutasteride to work? Well, that brings up another very important question, too. If we are switching over from finasteride to dutasteride, do we have to overlap the two drugs for some period of time until the slowpoke drug dutasteride kicks in? Well, the answers to these questions are actually not all that mysterious, Chooms. They can all be answered based on the pharmacokinetics of dutasteride, which has been very well studied. I mean, it is an FDA-approved drug, after all. I've touched on these questions before in my videos on the dutasteride master race, but I don't think I presented this information as clearly as I possibly could could, so I thought I'd just do a video to specifically answer these questions about how quickly it takes dutasteride to work exactly. First of all, let's take a look at what exactly is a half-life. Okay. So to explain this, let's suppose you've been on a drug for a long enough period of time to reach a steady state concentration of the drug in the blood. What happens to the blood concentration if you suddenly stop the drug? Well, you will get a curve that looks like this. You can see that the concentration at first falls off rapidly, but then slows down. In this example here, in the first six hours, the drug concentration falls from 100 to 50, and the next six hours, it falls from 50 to 25, and in the next six hours, it falls from 25 to 12.5, and so on. In other words, it takes six hours for the drug concentration to fall by half. So six hours is the half-life of this particular drug. You can see that after five half-lives, almost all the drug is out of the system. So if you want to get a drug out of your system, you need to stop it and then wait for at least five half-lives. So the most important thing that the half-life tells us is how long the drug effect lasts after stopping it, and if you have side effects from a drug, how long it's going to take for those side effects to subside after stopping the drug. So. If you got side effects on a drug with a long half-life, it could take a long time for the side effects to go away after stopping the drug. For 
asteroid, the half-life is five weeks. So five half-lives is 25 weeks. So the worst case scenario here is that it could take 25 weeks or about six months for deuterosteride side effects to go away completely after stopping the drug. Of course, that doesn't always mean you'd have to wait six months for side effects to go away. If the side effects are related to the concentration of the drug in the blood, even one half-life may be enough time for the blood level to fall enough to eliminate those side effects. Also, there is a little quirk in the half-life of deuterosteride that is especially important to members of the deuterosteride middle class. The deuterosteride middle class refers to deuterosteride users who take a low dose of deuterosteride with an average dose of 0.1 milligrams per day. The deuterosteride middle class quirk is that it turns out that deuterosteride is metabolized by two different processes in the body. So it can have two different half-lives depending on the dose of the drug. The five-week half-life that we just talked about is what's called a linear half-life because as the drug concentration in the blood increases, the amount eliminated also increases in a linear fashion. Like what you see in this graph here, this is called linear metabolism. However, deuterosteride also has what's called nonlinear metabolism, which means as the concentration of the drug gets higher, elimination actually gets slower, like in this graph here. However, this nonlinear metabolism is only relevant for low doses of deuterosteride, also known as the deuterosteride middle class. For the deuterosteride master race, though, what happens is at higher doses of deuterosteride, this nonlinear metabolism mechanism stops working. This isn't a problem, though, because deuterosteride has the linear metabolism pathway that takes over metabolizing the drug. This all sounds pretty complicated, though, so why do I even bother bringing it up? Well, first of all, the nonlinear metabolism pathway has a much shorter half-life than the linear metabolism pathway. The nonlinear pathway has a half-life of only three days. So I used to think that this pathway didn't play much of a role, but it turns out I was wrong. That's because low-dose deuterosteride, specifically the 0.1 milligram dose of the deuterosteride middle class, is metabolized predominantly by the nonlinear pathway, meaning that if you are on 0.1 milligrams per day of deuterosteride, the half-life of the drug is only three days. So this seems to be another advantage of the deuterosteride middle class who take low-dose deuterosteride. Like I showed in my video on low-dose deuterosteride, which I'll link below, deuterosteride at around 0.1 milligrams per day blocks the type 2 5-air isoenzyme in the blood by about 80%, which is very similar to or even better than finasteride at 1 milligram per day. Since deuterosteride comes in a 0.5 milligram soft gel capsule, in order to actually take 0.1 milligrams of deuterosteride per day, you have to approximate that dose by taking a 0.5 milligram capsule of deuterosteride once or twice per week, which is a convenient dosing interval that can be stacked with daily finasteride too if you prefer. So on top of those advantages of low-dose deuterosteride, it looks like you get a much shorter half-life too. So even if you do get side effects on this dose, they would go away within weeks instead of months after stopping deuterosteride like you'd see with 0.5 milligrams per day. Again, if you want to know more about low-dose deuterosteride, please watch my video that is in the Deuterosteride Master Race playlist. So we've talked about half-life in terms of how quickly a drug is eliminated from the body, but like I mentioned earlier, the half-life also has to do with how quickly a drug builds up in the blood when you first start taking it. When you first start taking a drug, the drug builds up in your system progressively, with the first dose having the biggest increase in blood levels and subsequent doses having less and less of an increase in the blood levels. Eventually, the drug gets to a steady state where its accumulation exactly matches its elimination. At that point, the average concentration is constant, though there are still peaks and valleys in concentration between each drug dose. It turns out that it takes about five half-lives to reach that steady state. With deuterosteride, that means you'll have to take it for 25 weeks before the blood concentration is stable. So the natural question here is, but Kevin, does that mean we have to take deuterosteride for 25 weeks before we get its full effects? That's crazy, bro, because 25 weeks is even longer than the duration of some hair loss studies. It's got to work faster than that, right, bro? Well, here's where things get even weirder. It turns out that how quickly 5 air blocking drugs work has absolutely nothing at all to do with their half-life. Instead, the effect of these drugs has everything to do with the half-life of the 5 air enzymes in our body. Yes, the enzymes that our bodies produce naturally have half-lives too. The vast majority of proteins and enzymes in the body are created and then destroyed very rapidly with a very fast turnover. That is very important because both finasteride and deuterosteride block the 5-air enzymes by binding to them irreversibly. 
This action of binding to the 5-AR enzyme is very rapid, and it is dependent on the concentration of the drug in the body, which depends on the drug dose. This figure here shows what happens to DHT levels after a single dose of finasteride or dutasteride at various dose levels. This is from an early study of dutasteride, where it was still known by its original name of GI198745. Anyways, if you look at the graph at the upper right, the important thing to realize is that the effect on DHT levels happens within one day even after just one dose. The effect then is long-lasting, particularly with high doses of dutasteride because of its five-week half-life at higher doses. The only exception is the 0.1 milligram dutasteride dose, which takes about three days to decrease DHT levels. According to what I've researched, that may be because the nonlinear metabolism pathway that the 0.1 milligram dose uses might actually just be the binding of the drug to the 5-AR enzyme. With higher doses, this binding occurs more quickly. So, the answer to the question of how quickly dutasteride works is that it blocks the 5-AR enzyme immediately. Of course, as you take more doses, the amount of the 5-AR blockade and the amount of DHT suppression will increase until you finally reach a steady state. But you get an immediate effect on DHT suppression as soon as you use it. You don't have to wait five half-lives in order to see an effect from the drug. So doing things like megadosing the drug at the beginning is completely unnecessary. Also, since the binding of the enzyme is irreversible, that means you have to wait wait for the new 5-AR enzymes to be regenerated if you stop the drug even after just one dose of it. The half-life of the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme is 80 hours, so it usually takes about two weeks for DHT levels to recover after stopping finasteride. The type 1 5-AR isoenzyme regenerates even faster with a half-life of 45 hours. With dutasteride, you potentially have to wait 25 weeks for the drug to get out of the system before the 5-AR enzymes can recover, which takes another two weeks. Because the effect on blocking the 5-AR enzyme is so rapid though, there is no need to overlap when switching between finasteride and dutasteride. You can literally just stop finasteride one day and then start dutasteride the next day and have no problems whatsoever. Dutasteride will immediately start blocking the 5-AR enzyme during the short period of time that finasteride takes to be eliminated from the body. So before closing, I need to put in one more plug for the dutasteride middle class. You may have noticed in this quote that I put up before that the 0.1 milligram dose has virtually no effect on the type 1 5-AR isoenzyme. That's because dutasteride mostly blocks the type 2 5-AR isoenzyme and is three times stronger at blocking the type 2 isoenzyme than finasteride is. It has less of an effect on the type 1 isoenzyme and at the standard dose of 0.5 milligrams per day, it does not completely block the type 1 isoenzyme. In fact, you have to have a dose of 10 milligrams of dutasteride per day or more in order to completely block both isoenzymes, and nobody uses that much dutasteride. The highest dose anybody will use will be 2.5 milligrams per day. So if anyone is worried about my new steroids, you don't need to be. First of all, dutasteride isn't a strong enough type 1 5-AR isoenzyme blocker to affect neurosteroid synthesis in the brain where neurosteroids like allopregnanolone are produced using the type 1 isoenzyme. Maybe if you took 10 milligrams of dutasteride per day or more, that could cause problems, but no one does that. Not even the dutasteride exalted race who use 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride per day. But if you're still worried about the effects on the type 1 5-AR isoenzyme, then the dutasteride middle class is probably where you want to be since 0.1 milligrams of dutasteride per day has virtually no effect on the type 1 isoenzyme, just like finasteride. So this was a lot of hair loss witchery for you chooms, but hopefully now it's clear that dutasteride and finasteride start working immediately to stop hair loss. You get significant suppression of DHT from the very moment you first start using either drug. Of course, the hair growth cycle is slow, so whether you're a finasteride peasant or part of the dutasteride master race, you really need to wait a minimum of at least six months in order to start seeing results from your treatment protocol. And more realistically, results can peak even later than that, sometimes up to two years after first starting treatment. So please, be patient, Jones. But no matter how long it takes, you can rest assured that whether you are a finasteride peasant or a member of the dutasteride master race, these powerful drugs will go to work immediately to defeat the slaphead curse. All right, Jones, next video will be something completely different. So stay tuned. I'll be back soon. God bless.